Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com, here to bring you another gear review. Today we're talking about optics, this guy right here, which is the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2E 1-6 Variable Power Scope. When we start looking at optics, there's lots of stuff out there. Whether it's little reflex sights like RMRs, or your red dots like Aimpoint EOTech, or things that use lenses, fixed power like ACOGs, or you get into stuff like this, which are actually variable power. This basically comes in in trying to marry up the good things as far as something like a red dot, as well as something with magnification, i.e. being able to use this on one power up close, like you would a red dot, or being able to crank this up to the top end, six power, and being able to reach out longer distances, as well as use for target identification. This optic uses the VMR2 MOA reticle. Also, second focal plane. What does that mean? First focal plane, second focal plane. This being second focal plane, every time I look through the reticle, whether I'm on one power or six power, it's the exact same. First focal plane, as you adjust magnification, the reticle is going to increase or decrease in size. Where that actually plays out is this being MOA, minute of angle, you have representative lines on your vertical as well as horizontal axis and you can use those lines to range distances. This being second focal plane, they only actually are representative of those distances when you're maxed out on six power. They also make a mill version, and then they also have just a BDC, bullet drop compensator, geared more towards kind of the three gun shooting. Having said that, you can obviously use the mill or MOA version as a BDC, basically by learning where your rounds are impacting on those different vertical lines. Either way, totally up to you. Dimensionally, just over 10 inches long and just over 21 ounces. Kind of heavy, but this being the Gen 2E, it's actually about a half pound lighter than the original, which begs the question, why didn't you guys make it light to begin with? But 30 millimeter tube right here, it's in a kinetic development slide lock mount. Works pretty good. Turrets are low and they're capped. This is nice, you're probably not gonna be dialing dope on this, but when you make your adjustments, one click, half MOA, and pretty distinctive clicks. In addition to that, you can actually zero out your turrets if you want to. On this side, we have our illumination knob. You actually pull it out, which allows you to adjust it, and then push it in to lock it. And there's an off in between each one, going from one to 11. It is absolutely daylight bright, which is a nice thing. Over here, we can adjust our magnification. It shows it up top, one, crank this guy over, get to six. And back here, we have our diopter adjustment. So we can adjust this to our eye, making sure that the reticle inside is crystal clear as we're looking through it. What do I like about this optic? I do like the fact that there's the adjustment. It's a variable. So having this on one power, it's pretty quick to get up on target and break those shots, especially up close, especially with the illumination in here. There's a red dot right in the middle and daylight bright. Crank this thing up to 11, really nice and bright, easy to pick up. I will caveat that with, while I do like using it in that capacity, i.e. fairly close distances, fast targets, where it does not shine, no pun intended, is in the dark. I actually ran this optic on this rifle in Night Fighter 101 by Viking Tactics and whew, some limitations to it. Granted, everything's a trade-off. This is not a red dot and a red dot is not a variable power optic. So where one is gonna shine, the other is absolutely gonna fall short. I will say though, this thing was pretty difficult as far as being able to use it at really close distances around vehicles, unconventional shooting positions, in the dark. It was challenging. What made this difficult in that night fighter course was shooting at close, in the dark, unconventional positions. The eye box on this, it's around four inches, and on one power, it's somewhat forgiving, but you still absolutely kind of have to be in that window. And with that, you end up switching over to your support side and getting in there and trying to find it, especially when you're in a really awkward position, can be pretty difficult. 
I went into that Night Fighter 101 course knowing this was absolutely probably the worst optic I could bring into it. But I wanted to try it in situations that weren't ideal. And coming away from it, this absolutely will work. It can be a little more challenging than something that would arguably be easier to use in that situation, like a red dot, but most certainly can use it. Where this really shines though is one, in daylight, especially at relatively close distances, works pretty good. But where we really get the most out of it is when we reach to those kind of intermediate ranges where we can actually crank this guy up to six and see our target, make those good shots. For me, with this optic on this rifle shooting 62 grain, I'm able to hold at the second line down, which is representative of 8 MOA. And at 500, this thing is dead on. Should you pick up one of these guys? I don't know. It really depends on application. There is absolutely a lot of versatility that comes with a variable power optic. Having this guy in one power with daylight visible red dot is pretty nice and being able to crank it up to six and be able to reach out further with pretty much whatever weapon system you're using. Pretty cool. Where do you pick these guys up? Probably not directly through Vortex because full MSRP is like close to two grand. Pretty expensive. Everywhere else pretty much has these guys for right around 1400 bucks. And since everywhere is about the same, my suggestion is just go through Amazon Prime. You're gonna get Vortex's awesome warranty, and on top of that, you get Amazon Prime's warranty as well as return policy, which is pretty hard to beat. As always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.